for BNP Paribas. Ian Stanner joins me now live from his offices in central London. Thank you so much for joining us. Ian, all right, so it is the key driver. The problem is, are the Germans going to be able to spend their way out of Eurozone's recession? The, uh, the problem that we have is that this strength we're seeing coming from uh, Germany is masking the weakness we're seeing throughout the rest of the uh, Eurozone. The countries at the periphery of Europe are still struggling and we're seeing a continued divergence, which is basically the underlying problem within the Eurozone. You have countries such as Germany continue to grow quite strongly, but uh, elsewhere we're still seeing contractions such as in Greece. So economic divergence is still very much an underlying problem within the, the Eurozone. But we now have the added problem that we're starting to see signs of a global slowdown. We're starting to see weaker data coming from the US and quite negative data shocks we've seen over the uh, past month certainly start, is likely to start to trigger some alarm bells. But also within China as well, we're starting to see some softness uh, yeah. coming through. So that's quite important because German recovery has been led by exports. So if we start to see the global recovery slowing down, that is going to hurt the German recovery and have an overall negative impact on the Eurozone. Overall, if we focus, of course, on Germany's growth, sure, they're growing, but I guess the problem is that a lot of European governments resent the fact that they're not spending. So there's more jobs in Germany than elsewhere, and yet the German consumer isn't going out there spending their euros. Will it start doing so? Yes, the, uh, the problem is that there's still a very high level of uh, uncertainty and we're likely to see this uh, export-led uh, recovery from Germany holding up for a little while longer. But I think that now the uh, consumer is still going to be uh, very, very concerned about the sustainability of that. And if we start to see a global slowdown uh, taking place, that will start to hit uh, Germany quite uh, quickly. And we're likely to see that uh, recovery also starting to falter. So I think the, the prospects of Germany being able to hold up the entire Eurozone is likely to start to, to fade and that is going to put the, uh, the euro under some uh, renewed pressure going forward as well. So, so we're tell me in some of the key levels that we're going to see on, on euro, what kind of basket of currency would you be favouring at the moment? Yes, as far as uh, the euro is uh, concerned, we believe that it's, it is going to uh, trade down uh, through the, uh, the bottom end of the recent uh, trading range. We have been testing some fairly uh, key levels uh, recently. so. Once we start to see a sustained move through the uh, 125 area, that's then going to open the way for a move fairly quickly, I believe, back down towards uh, 122, maybe even the 120 over the course of the, uh, the next uh, couple of months. Now, the uh, currencies which are going to remain very well supported in this environment are still going to be the uh, traditional low-yielding uh, currencies, which such as the uh, Japanese yen and the, uh, the Swiss franc. Now, the Japanese yen has uh, continued to strengthen quite, uh, quite significantly despite the efforts of the uh, Japanese authorities to try and slow that appreciation. And the steps we've seen um, so far this week, I think, are insufficient to stop that appreciation at this stage. Ian, thank you so much. Yeah, we're seeing quite a lot of support for both the Swiss franc but also the yen in today's market. Ian Stannard there from BNP Paribas.